produces X-ray machines that do, in fact, produce a, uh, a, 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 um, a, a picture with some verisimilitude of the internal organs. You see, if we are able to produce these X-ray machines, these bridges, this computer code, perhaps truth doesn't matter. Perhaps pragmatism, uh, it, perhaps pragmatism is enough. Uh, a certain knowledge set or a certain skill set you know, might, might be deployed um, to determine it and, and, and so on. Now, the method that's deployed, if we are to argue that science deploys certain methods and that these methods determine what is science and what is not science, then we need to find methods that are practised by all science and that are peculiar um, to science. If we were to go around and do surveys around science faculties in, in the universities that practise contemporary Western science, and ask for what these methods might ask for what these methods might be. The answer that we'd get would be reliant upon empiricism and induction. These would seem to be key methods in contemporary Western science. What scientists would idealise their method as is to firstly define a question observe the world, use one's curiosity and one's imagination and come up with a question. On the uh, uh, having done that first, then to gather information that's relevant to the question. Empiricism. So actually look for evidence. Gather information. Form a hypothesis would be the third. Test the hypothesis, analyse the data, interpret the data and draw conclusions. Now, you can see there that the most important elements here are in empiricism, induction, experimentation and hypothesis testing. All of that, I'm sure you, you, you may well be thinking, yeah, 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 so what? That, that's all very obvious. That's all, uh, of course, that's what scientists do. And of course they do. Everybody knows that. But it hasn't always been the case. It's only very recently been the case. In the ancient world of natural philosophy, knowledge wasn't obtained by empiricism and through induction, through the gathering, through the inductive logic applied to a body of evidence. It wasn't uh, it, 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 natural philosophy. It was, wasn't practiced in that way at all. It was obtained by deduction uh, rather than induction. So, for example, Plato and his contemporary Greek philosophers argued two particular conclusions from first principles that were accepted by those engaged in the inquiry as, as being true. So, the, most, the best known one, um, all men are mortal, Socrates is a man, therefore Socrates is mortal. It's the classic example of deduction, where the truth is contained in the premise, and so long as the premise is true, the conclusion must be true, because the conclusion is found to be in, in, in the premise. Now, that's a really powerful form of logic, and for 2,000 years, it was the dominant form of natural philosophy. It was the way people found out about rocks and about the sun and about the earth and the atmosphere and the human body and all the other things that we now use science um, to find out about. One begins with axioms. The axioms are established either by cultural tradition, through religious belief, or through facts that appear to be self-evident, and then deductive logic, 
argument is used. This was very much knowledge in the ears, if I could put it that way. Knowledge in the ears, whereas in English now we often say seeing is believing. Knowledge is something now located in sight in Western modern science. In those days, it was in hearing, in debate, in logic, from deducting, using deduction from first principles. You see, for them, the world was a deceptive place. Only children and fools believed what they saw. To actually go out and get some evidence you know, is not the way of, of finding things out. The material world of objects concealed a world of essences. And the world of essences wasn't necessarily revealed in the objects themselves. And it was the essential world, not the world as it appeared to be, not the world that was available to the human senses. The essential world was the world um, that was important. So having agreed to what these essences were, people could deduce conclusions that were not agreed. You could agree, uh, for example, that the universe is perfect. The universe is perfectly constructed. Having agreed on this axiom, we can then argue about whether the sun travels in a circular orbit or an elliptical orbit. And one might deduce that it is circular because a circle is more perfect than an ellipse and the earth uh, and the universe is perfect. So uh, from a process of deduction from, from first principles, uh, we can determine uh, whether the uh, whether the premises, whether the conclusions um, are, are true. Now, the, the problem, the deduction is, is uh, the, according to you know, logicians, um, uh, deduction is, um, uh, is a superb method of reaching a conclusion, provided, of course, that you can be sure that the premises are correct. Uh, so I can be uh, absolutely certain um, that, uh, you like cricket, right? if I begin with the premise that all Sri Lankans like cricket, you are a Sri Lankan, therefore you like cricket. Now, the logic is perfect if one can accept the truth of the premise that all Sri Lankans like cricket. Now, this is the, the, to test these premises, to come up with ways of, of testing these premises was uh, a huge step forward uh, and, really it, it is, uh, oops, uh, in, and really is something that um, de defined where we are today uh, in respect of science. And it was around 1500 to about 1750 that these new, that a new way of thinking uh, overcame the classical Greek approach to epistemology. This new form of reasoning was the foundation of Western uh, modern science. And as I said earlier, the key feature of it was to use induction and to use empiricism. So what it did this new method was sought to gather evidence through observation. Now, you think, duh, what else would you do? Prior to this period, one didn't. If you wanted to know whether the orbit was circular or elliptical, you argued about it from first premises. You didn't actually go out and look, because going out and looking it is deceptive. The world will deceive you. It will not reveal itself to you. This was, this was the thinking. But through Copernicus, uh, Kepler, uh, Galileo and, and others, we see they actually 
observed the paths of the planets. They used observations. And from the observations, they calculated general laws or general principles.